and I am a uh, fifth generation rancher here. And uh, I guess the reason I'm up here is, uh, I guess my question is, how do you compensate us for our lifestyle? Um, we had a similar question in the open houses, and I think what you're talking about here is, it, it, just to clarify if I understand correctly, you're talking about knowing that there's going to be contractors in the area, people running around. Um, what I heard, I guess, in one of the open houses, the concern people expressed were, uh, you know, they left their doors unlocked and, and so forth, and they didn't know the people running around. So uh, that would elevate their concerns. Is that, am I kind of summarizing this correctly? What, no. what you're kind of looking at? No. no? Okay. I, I need yeah, you to that, clarify that, for me. That's, uh, you know, something that uh, is uh, happening, or that would happen over a short period of time. We have to live with this thing the rest of our lives. Our ancestors have to live with it. Uh, our offspring does. And uh, we live in a very pristine area here. And running uh, something like that through the heart of our uh, area, I mean, there's people that uh, are going to worry about it. Okay. I mean, uh, a bug has more value than the, what we do as humans, it seems like. I mean, the, we're concerned about uh, the <coughs> bug out there, but yet uh, we have no value. Well, I, I understand that, you know, people don't like to look at transmission lines, that kind of thing. Um, I think the parallel that, that I try to draw with this would be, we're, we're kind of like Nebraska Department of Roads. Um, when they have to build a road, they compensate for that road, and what we do is, is we put a document together that, that's going to ensure we've got the rights, uh, I think as Mr. Horn said, in perpetuity here. And so, uh, knowing all that, we put a document together to make sure we have all these rights and we pay all that compensation up front and, and fully compensate you for that. Uh, and again, that's, that's uh, how the industry works, that's how we proceed on. I understand uh, people don't, you know, some people don't like power lines. I can also tell you there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, just a, something else that's out there and they don't mind. And so, how do I say this? Just to you know, compensate for, I guess, an inconvenience, or, or a, that's probably not the right term, but but to compensate you because you know that a power line is out there, you know, that's something we don't do. We're compensate you, compensating you for uh, the property rights that we are acquiring uh, in order for us to have a transmission line out there. I hear you there, but like he said, you're compensating us for the present time, not the future. Well, that's true. I mean, that's how we base business. Uh, I can tell you right now, for example, we're compensating uh, property on another project where land values are decreasing. And so you can say we're actually overcompensating there. But, you know, you can speculate on where things are gonna go, et cetera, but we just need to work in today's environment, today's values as we proceed on through the project. Speak up, I guess that kind of answers my question. The other example I had to do would be like if uh, somebody was going to build the interstate up to Sutherland over to your transmission line and uh, hoping that they're going to pick up uh, revenue from cafes and things like that. You know, you guys are out there trying to pick up revenue from uh, possibly wind generation which uh, nobody could ever answer my question of what it cost per kilowatt to produce one generation uh, electricity. I can try and answer that for you. Um, the more recent wind uh, generation facilities that we've been involved with, the cost of the energy has been in that 20 to $25 range per megawatt hour. Uh, some of the uh, wind facilities that have been in service longer than that, the cost of the energy out of those facilities is, is higher than that. 
uh, maybe in the $40 per megawatt hour range. Um, the cost of energy has come, come down significantly over the last you know, eight to 10 years. So you guys are trying to capture something that is about double the price of what it is uh, today as far as uh, electricity? Um, we're really not trying to capture wind energy. Um, or the potential for it? Yeah. What this transmission line will do, one of, one, of the, one of the needs for the transmission line is it would enable the development of future renewable resources in the region if it was determined that they were appropriate and necessary. Uh, this part of the state, uh, up through this area, is a very wind-rich resource. Nebraska is like the third or fourth windiest state in terms of re wind resources in the nation. I don't know whether there will be a wind project developed up here. But I can tell you that one of the reasons for building this line is to enable that development in the future because you need access to transmission capability to add generation, whether it's a renewable project or a traditional coal-fired or natural gas-fired or whatever type of power plant it might be, you need transmission access to get that energy into the network. Regardless of the cost? Right? No, the, the, the projects, if there are projects, they'll be determined based on their value and their economics from a, from a generation resource standpoint. This isn't about generation. This project, as a transmission project, will enable the ability in the future, if it proves necessary uh, and economic, to add wind resources or other new renewable resources in this area of the state. Again, I don't know if they're going to come or not. That's, that's not the purpose of this project. This project also has two other purposes that are very important. One has to do with the reliability of the system and the reliability of the transmission network in the state. And that does impact you. You live in a portion of the state where we had a very difficult time two years ago getting the energy that this area of the state needed into this area of the state. This transmission project will improve that. This transmission project will also improve other reliability issues in the system that Mr. Malone explained in his presentation. The third need for this project has to do with congestion relief. Having another big transmission path in the state enables us to move energy to our customers more effectively and use our resources more effectively. So there's a benefit to all of us in Nebraska for doing this project, and that's why we're here today. We wouldn't be here if there, those needs weren't present. Thank you for your time and 